Uh, Jason asked asked a question, and it's a it's a good question. I think it's a good question. He said, "Who were some of the old timers that hung around the business, driving the ring truck, refereeing, uh, taking tickets, setting up chairs, etc.?" That a few people realized were wrestlers uh, from generations prior. Well, uh, one of the people would be Klondike Bill. Mm-hmm. Yep. And was Gordon Nelson as well. They they both they were actually the ring crew for, for World Championship Wrestling for years. Gordon was still in good shape when he yeah. was at the ring that he was when he, he was can whoop you any day of the week. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm <laughs> trying to think is there anybody else, Jack, you can Kursky, think of? Kursky, I think it was either Kurska Joe or Gene used to take tickets in Nashville. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I, I remember that. Th- those three are the only ones that I ever had any, you know, personal contact with. So, and and I only met them a, a handful of times. So, I was in I was in Bristol, Tennessee. I think it's a Bristol, Tennessee, where the Viking Hall is in Bristol, Tennessee. I think it's Bristol, right. Tennessee, not Bristol, Virginia. And, and so I'm up there and I'm doing the ring announcing, and and I can't remember who's I don't I can't remember who's in the ring, but I remember Randy Anderson was the referee, and, and Klein Doc Bill was ringing the bell. I was doing the announcing and. And so the match was going, and it, it came through its finish, and one, two, three, and, and once it says, ring the bell, and I look over there, and Klondike Bill was like this, sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so I had to go over there and hit the bell, and it woke him up. <laughs> you know, he, I told him, I said, I know you've seen this same match 42 times, but uh, <laughs> you probably don't it need to It was riveting. It was riveting. Uh, yeah, Bill think- Dundee used to hit him with the with his umbrella. He said, Wake up, man! <laughs> <laughs> he used to sleep a lot. I I will have to tell you that. Well, let's let's get off that subject for a minute and uh, let's move on. And I I was thinking about today, and I was thinking about lady wrestlers, women wrestlers that really made an impact in 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 wrestling. And and I was thinking of two that that I remember more than anything in the eighties. And that was Judy Martin and Joyce Grable. Those two had to make more of an impact in professional wrestling in, in, the, in the early 80s than any two women. And they had matches with men that were spectacular matches. Yeah. Did you ever see any of them, Jack? I did. I did. I saw a couple of them with uh, uh, Miss Grable. She was, uh, I think, the world to her anyway. <laughs> It was great, yeah. man. You remember the one, Rodney? Yeah, Columbus, that's, when, that's when we saw was in Columbus. That's one where Steve-O knocked Joyce Grable out. We loved that one. Uh, I, Atlanta, I, we, oh, it's not I'm pretty good. sure that was the one I saw. Yeah. It was so good because she was slapping old Steve-O, and, and he was trying to back up from her, slapped him, tried to back up from him. Finally, he just gets enough of it and rounds it. Oh, that place goes nuts. Yeah, I think, where's she from, Columbus? Is Joyce from Columbus? I think so. I'm not. I, I know she's from Georgia, but I'm. I think Columbus, but I won't. I won't swear to that. The match. The match actually was better in Columbus than it was in Atlanta. Yes. They were afraid. I guess they were afraid. But Joyce yeah. and Judy was in full form in Columbus for sure. I mean, they they took it to the limit down there. Well, but wasn't it a tag team match or something? They had? Yeah, yeah. They, you know, tag team yes. Had, yeah, I was there. there. I remember now. I Jared Atlanta, Roberts was in that. Jock Rougeau. Right. And then in yep. Atlanta, it, they were in the tag team tournament that night. Got you. And you know, it was so great because then they left there and went and did the same exact thing in Southeastern Championship Wrestling with, I think it was Robert Gibson and Roy Lee Welch. Now, whether or not they did the same matches, I don't know. But I, I would love to see those. I would love to see that because – they didn't pull nothing. <laughs> you know that. They went all out down there. I think in the Omni uh, that night, because I think it was it was the afternoon, and then the, the night was uh, was was the Omni. And I think he slammed. I think power he slammed her. Slammed her. Yeah, power, power slammed, slammed her. her. Beat her but, yeah, uh, she but went up for a, a head scissors, and he caught her and gave her a power slam. Who was another lady wrestler? I was just thinking about that today while, while I was sitting. Who, what, who was another lady wrestler that made an impact in professional wrestling? Uh, well, of course, my two favorites are, are Bambi and Peggy Lee. Oh, yes. You know, they started in the mid-80s. and Well, Peggy predated her, I guess, to the early 80s. But, um, I mean, <laughs> they, they wrestled everywhere. And you had to be careful where you put them on the card because if you didn't have a strong match to 
uh, you know, after them, you just couldn't follow them. I mean, they, they beat the snot out of each other. And uh, <laughs> it was some great, great matches every time. Great matches. Oh yeah, they had great matches. It didn't matter what, what what match they 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 had great matches. And and I'll tell you another one is Wendy Richter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The stuff she did in Mid South Wrestling was yeah. We were covering her last Mid South party. To me, they missed a tremendous opportunity by not having her come on the crew. She was just that good. I mean, she could have easily have been Hercule Hernandez's ballet or manager. Easily with Cornette. Yeah. I mean, it, it would have been awesome because she could talk to him. She could do yeah. the interview for sure. Yeah, she did really good. You know, I, I can remember when they when they brought him in the Mid-South and she did the thing where she put uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan asleep. I mean, that was so good. And then she went on TV and she she accepted the award and, and Duggan came out and kissed her. And, and I thought, oh, man, they need to bring her back. And I don't think I think it was like a, maybe two or three weeks later. She ends up in WWE and yep. I think she wins she sure the, the title there. So uh, it was uh, yeah. it was good. To, it was good to see her uh, uh, really make it. And when director was, you know, I know she gets some bad rap because she left there. But I think she left there because some of her checks were, were a little. A little yeah, there. There was a lot going on. I think some people were taking some check, more money than what they may have supposed oh. to have been taking from her, uh, from her, and she deserved every dime she got. She really and truly did exactly. uh, deserve that. Uh, Wendy wanted to uh, tell you, Jack, that you one of the best hills. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. I appreciate it. And, I tried. Yeah, and, and then uh, uh, Rodney was too, but he was in a different league for everybody else. <laughs> That was just in the back, Rodney. Was the <laughs> <laughs> David Lawson's watching this on YouTube, and hopefully, David, we do not get a copyright strike tonight. Uh, we don't have no videos playing. We had a copyright strike the last uh, time we did something, so and uh, hopefully we don't get that. What are your thoughts on Stevie Steve O? To me, he didn't fit in George at all, but he was there a very long time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how long was he there? I remember him being there. At least a year, uh, you know, probably longer. But I, I remember distinctly about a year. Uh, I thought he was good. Uh, now yeah. he didn't get the greatest crowd reaction, uh, and I don't know if that was more that they just didn't, you know, really put much into him, or you know what the deal was. But he was, he was, he was really good. I remember though it really hurt him. It's one of the things that hurt him, and I and I hated it for him. They did this. They did this thing in in Atlanta where Dusty Rhodes gets he comes out to help somebody, and I can't remember who it was. Don Carson comes out, hits him with the I guess it was a two by four in the head, and Dusty goes out and they carry him out. It wasn't enough for him not to be able to wrestle, but <laughs> they still did it. Well, my Golden Stomper is going to go against Dusty Rhodes that night. Well. Dusty can't come out, so here comes Steve-O. And people just boo him. I mean, they just yeah, boo him. It didn't out. work good, no. It didn't work good. Now, he had a great match with Stomper, and he won the National Heavyweight Championship that night. And it did get a pretty good pop when he, when he, when he sure. won the belt. But you just can't – you can't – Dusty and Steve-O just wasn't in the same yeah. hemisphere, you know. I mean, I hate to say that about Steve, but he – you know, he wasn't Dusty Rhodes. But, uh, Steve was good. You know, he broke his hand. Uh, wrestling against the great Kabuki, he yep. he, he did the old. Uh, I'm going to stop him from kicking me, and I don't know which great Kabuki that was. You know, there were two great Kabukis. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not I, sure. I don't know which one it was. I I never really knew that till years later that there was actually two great Kabukis that this went from one place to the other. Well, actually, there were three because I think there was one in England too. But anyway. uh, so there, so they just. Uh, Gary Hart just went way out and just uh, just had all kinds of great kabukis at that time. <laughs> uh, Sandra Hunt said, met Joyce and Judy a few years, years back. I was admiring Joyce's uh, Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame ring, and she asked if I liked to wear it. Duh, yeah, such classy ladies, too. I agree. They were, uh, they were great. Let's see. Uh, Michael said, Heidi Lee Morgan was fantastic. Saw her work with Wendy Richter in a cage in Bricktown, New Jersey, and hats off to today's ladies who are the beneficiaries of the work put in in the 70s and 80s. You know, one of my favorites was Trish Stratus. Yeah. I thought she was spectacular and Lita. Oh, she, she was great. Yeah, yeah, they both were. 
you have to give both of them uh, uh, and Casey. JC, Jason uh, Presley says and Casey. You know, I don't know. Did, uh, did we ever see Ann Casey wrestle, Rodney? I'm not sure. Now, she could wrestle under different names. As we learned uh, about Ma Bass the other night, she wrestled under many different names. I still want to see something about – I want to see some video with her. I think that's going to be – that would be awesome. Uh, uh, Jamie Maple said, I was thinking Peggy Lee Leather. Yes. Uh, going to say, Babby, uh, Jack beat me to it. Uh, yeah, Babby was very good. And, you know, there was, there was, there was other wrestlers. You, you know, you have to give Moolah the, the credit she deserves. But, you know, I never really thought she was a great wrestler. I thought she was a great personality, but I didn't think she was as good as Wendy Richter, Joyce Scrabble, Judy. I didn't think she, they were as good as, uh, as as those people because I thought they worked a lot harder than she did. But now, at the same time, we didn't see her. I think she started in the fifties. So, so you know, by the time we were seeing her in the eighties, yeah, I was going to say I, I saw some some older stuff from from her, and she was a, a different worker in the fifties than she was, you know, by the seventies and eighties, of course. I mean, age catches up with all of us, but she had got into a, uh, a routine that worked for her that got yeah. over and, and, you know, and kept her from getting hurt at her age. And I mean, that, that's smart. Yeah. Uh, Mike said, uh, and Casey, uh, Charles said, I love watching Bambi. Uh, Charles also said Lexi Fife. Not for sure. I know her. Do you know her? I've heard of her. Uh, you know, I saw her in magazines. I've never, never seen her work. I heard good things about her, but never saw her work. Michael said, this is a fantastic forum. Thank you. Really enjoying the conversation. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, it's, can you think of some more uh, lady wrestlers, uh, Rodney? Yes, I do. One of our favorites. We heard of Joyce Grable. Have you ever heard of Judy Grable? Yeah, Dad the, knows the, Judy the original. Yeah. <laughs> Dad knows Judy Grable. He knew her very well. <laughs> Where and tell that story, Rodney? While I'm looking through them. Well, uh, the, the wrestlers were late. They were. They had a problem. Uh, there was some snow or something. But so the only people that were in the building was Judy Grable and and our father, Ronnie West. So before everybody got there to kind of get the people, keep them from being bored. Judy Grable came out and done a demonstration. Dad and her was doing a demonstration of different holes, which turned into a full-fledged match, which in the end, Judy Grable pinned Dad one, two, three, right in the middle, and he never lived it down. He never <laughs> lived it down. He was ripped forever from that. Yeah, and she, if you could, if you want to look at it, she, uh, Judy Grable is one of the people on What's My Line, one of the old versions from like the 50s. And she's on there. Check it out. It is hilarious. Them trying to figure out who this was, who the, what her line was. And I mean, it was an, a, it was one of the big stars that was there. And he was making all kinds of comments. And the people were just roaring. But yeah, Judy <laughs> Grable, fantastic. And we have to give, even though I never watched her, Mildred Burke. You have to put her in. She evidently yes. was one great uh, lady wrestler for, for her time. Yeah. Then, then there's. Let's not forget about Penny Banner. Dad loved Penny Banner. Uh, she was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, she was Johnny Weaver's wife. If I'm not mistaken, is right. She and was. Yeah. Was, she was fantastic. She was a fantastic wrestler. And uh, then let's uh, not also another one that I was thinking about was Cora Combs. She was one of the best. Dead off the world, Cora Combs. Now that's Debbie Combs' mother, and yeah. uh, Cora, they said Cora was prop. Dead thought, in his estimation, that Cora was probably the best wrestler, women's wrestler that there was, and he really loved Cora. I thought they did. I Chris Vick, Bambi, and Rockin' Robin Smith. Yes, Rockin' yeah. Robin. Our beautiful ladies who are, were his uh, two top to watch, and I have to agree, Robin was Rock and Robin was very good. Oh, uh, Charles said nothing like the first Kabuki. This is true, but you know they were actually a uh, first Kabuki that came before the Great Kabuki, uh, and I did a post on that. For right now, though, I cannot remember the guy's name. For <laughs> yeah, I can't either. But there was a original Kabuki that Gary Hart took the. Uh, Took that, uh, and I mean, he did change it a little bit. I don't think, I think he's the one that came up with the uh, spit in the green stuff and then eventually the red. 
he would go back and forth uh, spitting red to green. That was a very uh, – I'll never forget that. And I'll never forget they, they blew that on Dusty Rhodes' jacket on his robe. And uh, Dusty was not very happy about it being on his robe and made no. Joe uh, clean that. And if if Donna Rodesto <laughs> – it's on. She was the one that was supposed to be the one to clean that up, and uh, she did clean it. She did have it cleaned, but the the green stuff did not come out of it because uh, I think she told them to clean it up and leave the green stuff on there. <laughs> <laughs> so she had to take it back, and it that was Dusty's white robe. You know, you remember the white? Yeah, I, me I remember the white robe. He wore that in Madison Square Garden. He had that one, and he was not happy of getting green stuff uh, all over it because uh, you know that was. Uh, that was a basic, uh, I think, food coloring. And so it really will do your. That's what it, yeah, that's what it was. Injustice, but but nobody yeah, can do it better than him. Yeah, and 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 just for historical reference, you put that inside a condom, and tied it up and stuck it in your mouth. Yes, and uh, <laughs> but the night the things we do to entertain. <laughs> the, th the night that he did the thing where he bit it, spit the green stuff. Went back, he bit the other side, spit the red stuff in the Omni in Atlanta was uh, tremendous. Uh, the people went nuts. And, you know, Kabuki was a great, a great wrestler. He would go and he'd get halfway down the aisle and he'd stop. And then he would do that turn and you'd see the fans all scatter. I mean, they would get out of his way. Uh, he did that in Chattanooga. He did it in Gaston, Alabama. He did it in most towns. <laughs> And the people would, I mean, they had that character. There's no doubt. They had that. He, Kabuki was over and people were afraid of him. <laughs> Ain't no doubt about that. Hell, we almost forgot about Sherry Martell. Yeah, we was let, I was letting other people think because, let's be honest, Sherry is in a league to herself. I mean, yeah. seriously, she is in a league by herself. Uh, I, I believe as far as she wrestled, just like me wrestled. I mean, she was that good. I mean, just fantastic. I see another name that were left out too. And in fact, I found a picture of her when I was going through some stuff here. I got to tell a, a quick story about Sherry Martell. She was in Meridian, Mississippi. And I had got, I had got all my tables up and I got them ready to get them ready to sell. And, and so the ladies came in that was selling Danny Davis's and Ken Wayne stuff. And, and, and so I was setting my stuff up and Sherry said, are you going to help them ladies get that table? I said, yeah, here in a minute. She said, I don't think I told you right here in a minute. I think I told you right now and picked me up and slammed me in Meridian, Mississippi on the ground. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'm going to go get the tables now. I mean, you know, she, she, from then on, you know, she tell me go get a table. I'm gonna go, go get a table. <laughs> Never forget that. I thought, man, I'm gonna get beat up. Uh, Charles offers a sweet Georgia Brown. <coughs> yeah, sweet Georgia Brown, no doubt. Uh, she he, she was a good one. Uh, Rodney uh, Tim Truitt said Rodney bet me beat me too. Joyce Grable, uh, Medusa. Yeah, Medusa. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, she was. She I was. Oh, oh, we're missing one. One of my favorite. Miss Texas Jacqueline. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, she, she, she was, was one of my favorites. I loved it, especially when she's doing this. Let me tell you, got that finger. She had that big long. She put that thing in your face. I will slap the taste clean it out of your mouth. I love that. <laughs> oh, Medusa. She was. She was. Uh, people hated her guts while she was in WCW. That yeah. for a while, being the the manager. I don't. I can't remember who she all she was the manager of anymore. But uh, I can just remember in Chattanooga, like Rude, wasn't it? Was it Rick Root? It was. Uh, man, I'll, I'll never forget though. I mean, he she. I I just remember her, and I remember how much heat she generated in Chattanooga at the UTC Arena when. Uh, one time that the WCW was running there, uh, Ted DiBiase's mother, what was her name? Gosh, I can't think of her name right now. I can't remember her name as well. If anybody knows what her name is or can do a search, let us know what her, uh, what Ted DiBiase's, uh, mom's name was. Let's see. Susan green, James. Uh, yeah. All right, James, what's how do you say that last name? Llewellyn. Llewellyn. Yeah, Susan Green was very good as well. 
And Jason said Mildred Burke really hit the big time in Alabama. Uh, Chris Jordan, the promoter of Birmingham at the time, 1936 to 1937, was the first to use her and Claire Mortison in the bigger venues instead of just the smaller towns. Yeah, Mildred. Mildred was. Uh, I did a, a little story on them. Owner and she must have been something, something to see. I mean, she was in shape. By the oh yeah, oh, yeah. She was in great shape. Uh, Larry Brock, uh, hello, Larry Brock. How are you doing tonight? Uh, Jeffrey uh, Saunders said yeah. the very fabulous Mula. Yeah, you can't you can't leave her out of some of the greatest uh, women wrestlers of all time. Is there anyone that we're we're missing? Ted DiBiase's mom was Helen Hild. H-I-L-D. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jack, uh, Larry Brock, what kind of cigar are you smoking, Jack? Uh, a lit one right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a brick house. I'll give them a good plug. They've got great cigars. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Jason. I, you beat, I beat you to it. Sorry about that. Uh, Charles, uh, uh, Sherry Martell, good-looking woman. Yes, she was. And, and very mean. Very mean woman. Now, she could whip any man, I believe. <laughs> I just have this feeling she could. Uh, David Lawson said, was in the Dangerous Alliance. Okay. Medusa was in the Dangerous Alliance. I just remember her uh, being in Chattanooga, uh, the UTC arena. For some reason, every time she walked past me, she slapped me in the back of the head. I never understood why <laughs> she did this. <laughs> we all want to do that, Brent. We all I just, want to do that. I asked her. I asked her when she came through the second time. Do I need to take a bump with that? I didn't want for sure it was supposed to be, uh, and she said, "No, that'll be all right. No bumps." So I, I don't know why she did it. Uh, yeah, Helen. Helen healed. Uh, sorry, Jason. Um, Joey Snyder, May Young. May yeah. Young, yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, she was a. There's no doubt she was a tremendous uh, wrestler, especially taking those bumps she took there at the uh, uh, back in when they, she was in her 80s. So, oh, undoubtedly, probably one of the toughest women that ever got in the business. I mean, she, uh, uh, you know, I, I've I've read stories about how she would beat guys up. You know, I mean, not in the ring. I'm talking about outside the ring in bars. Uh, she was a tough lady to talk about it. in the future we're going to talk about uh you know we, it's he does for some reason our, our followers don't they're not big hulk hogan fans for some reason i've noticed but you know he has to be uh, you have to give him the respect he he, he deserves because he started in 1976 and was beat up for over a year in the wrestling business over a year was beat up in the wrestling business by uh, uh masuda and so uh, go ahead jack if you'll go, uh, you know, if y'all go out there and look at some, uh, pull up some video on YouTube of him in Japan, uh, Hogan was a great worker in his day. Uh, I yeah. mean, he, he could really wrestle, uh, you know, he fell into that routine that he was told to do, which worked and it drew money. So I'll never say nothing bad about Hulk Hogan, not in the ring, maybe outside. You know, a lot of people take, <laughs> a lot of people take credit for, for his, success in wrestling or they started them. I've noticed a lot of people said they started them, but really and truly Jack and Jerry Briscoe are the two people that really seen Hulk Hogan and said, this guy could be a big wrestling star. Uh, yeah. they, they're the ones that got him to, to Masuda. Eddie Graham gave him his first uh, chance in the wrestling business. Uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't Jerry Jarrett. It wasn't Ron Fuller and, and them. It was actually Eddie Graham that gave him, and he didn't wrestle as, as, uh, Terry Ballet. He wrestled as a super destroyer when he first started. So some people may not know that he was there because it says super destroyer instead of, uh, Hulk Hogan or Terry Ballet or Terry Boulder. But the first big chance he got was with Louis Tillet. As the booker for Ron Fuller, that was his that was his biggest push in the wrestling business. But he left for a year uh, prior to that because uh, he just uh, he just got tired of getting beat up. And yeah. He got he evidently he got beat up a lot uh, during this time. Uh, James said uh, Misty Blue, yeah, yeah, Misty Blue and Linda Dallas used to have some pretty good matches. Uh, Tammy said uh, she was legendary. I think she's talking about Mae Young. Uh, Michael said, I got lit up pretty good by Moolin May Young. Had the pleasure of working those two in a six-person tag match 
in the ECWA wow. early nineties. Oh, that would have been uh, that. That I hope they tape these things. I hope you got that on. Yeah, tape. we got to see that. 